these are sample problems that are taken based on our topic, introduction to refrigeration systems. Sample problem number one. A heat engine is operated between temperature limits of 1,370 degrees Celsius and 260 degrees Celsius. Engine is supplied with 14,142 kilojoules per kilowatt hour. Find the, the Carnot cycle efficiency in percent. So the first step is to establish the working formula for the Carnot cycle efficiency. If you are to look back in our discussions, Carnot cycle efficiency is just equals to one minus TL over TH, where TL is the temperature of the low temperature reservoir and TH is the temperature of the high temperature reservoir. So based on the given, our TL is equal to 260 degrees Celsius. It is important in using the Carnot cycle efficiency to convert the temperature to absolute scale. That is why we have to add 273.15. I encourage everyone to use that conversion so that we will have the same results all throughout this subject. So we have TL equals to 500. 33.15 Kelvin and pH equals to 1,643.15 Kelvin. The next step is to substitute this temperature to our Carnot cycle efficiency formula. That's why we have 0 0.6755. And in order to obtain the percentage equivalent of the Carnot cycle efficiency, all you have to do is just to convert it to percentage by multiplying by 100%. So we have Carnot cycle efficiency is equals to 67.55%. What does this Carnot cycle efficiency tells us is that for a heat engine operated between these temperature limits, the highest uh, efficiency that can be obtained is 67.55%. So no matter how much you try to improve the system, you cannot go beyond 67.55%. As in fact, 67.55 percent is all, is a very ideal efficiency and basically it cannot be obtained in actual operation. Sample problem number two. A Carnot cycle requires 35 kilojoules per second from a hot source. The heat produces 15 kilowatt of power and the temperature of the sink is 26 degrees Celsius. What is the temperature of the hot source? So this time we are given with the, the power requirement, which is 35 kilojoules per second. And the heat for that is being produced, which is 15 kilowatt, and the temperature of the sink, which is 26 degrees Celsius. So we are looking for the hot source temperature, and that is our pH. So let's go back to our formula for the Carnot cycle efficiency. And based on our discussion, efficiency is equal to the desired, the outcome over the, the input or the output over the input. So our output for this engine is our power. And the input is the, the heat from the hot source or the heat that you uh, put into the system for it to operate. So that's why we can also equate that to our Carnot cycle efficiency, which is equals to one minus TL over pH. So from our given, we know that our output is equals to 15 kilowatt because based on the, based on what we can see here, it's the the, prod the product or what is being produced is 15 kilowatt. And our QH or the heat that is um, that you place or put into the system is 35 kilowatt, which is also the, the requirement heat from the hot source. 
And then our low temperature reservoir temperature is 26 plus 273.15. Make sure to convert it to absolute temperature scale so that you can use the formula since we have 299.15 Kelvin. And so by substitution, we can get 15 over 35 is equals to 1 minus 299.15 over TH. And so can, you can see here that the temperature that we are looking for is the one that is, that is unknown yet. So all you have to do is just to solve for TH using algebraic manipulation. So our TH, or the temperature of the hot source, is equals to 523.5125 Kelvin. Also, I encourage everyone for this subject to, to, to use four decimal places for results that are not yet final. And then for the final output, it should be two decimal places so that we will have the same answer. So you have 5 to 3.5125. All you have to, to do is to convert it to degrees Celsius by uh, subtracting 273.5. 15, so we have 250.36 degrees Celsius. So it tells us that the temperature of the hot or the temperature of the source of heat is 250.36 degrees Celsius. Sample problem number three. Key. So a reverse Carnot cycle requires three horsepower and extracts energy from a lake to a heat source. If the house is kept at 70 degrees Fahrenheit and requires 2000 BTU per minute, what is the temperature of the lake? So in this problem, it is obvious that the desired output is to heat the house. So basically this reverse Carnot cycle, so we also learned from our discussion that reverse Carnot cycle can either be refrigerator or a heat pump. For this case, since the output, the desired output is to heat the house, so this is a heat pump. So this reverse Carnot cycle, which is a heat pump, extracts three horsepower from a lake. And this three horsepower is used to keep the house at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. To keep the house uh, at a high temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which requires 2000 BTU per minute to maintain in the system or in our house. So what is the temperature of the lake? So obviously the temperature outside should be uh, lower than the temperature inside since we are to keep the house at a high temperature. So in this case, this is a case for country that are experiencing snow or winter season. And like here in the Philippines, we only have um, dry and wet season. That's why we do not use heat pump. But this is more applicable to countries that are using heat pump because they're experiencing uh, extremely cool temperatures. So the first step is to um, establish the formula for the Carnot cycle efficiency for the heat pump, and that is equals to the COP of the refrigerator plus one. And we also know that COP for the heat pump can be written as the ratio of the desired output, which is to heat the house. That's why we have our desired, desired output is QH. In the Philippines, our desired output is QL. But since this is a heat pump, so the desired output is QH. And the input for this reverse Carnot cycle is the power requirement, which is W. So we can equate it to the COP of the refrigerator, which is TL over TH minus TL plus 1. So from our given, we know that the power requirement, which is 
also given the power required, which is 3 horsepower. So all you have to do is just to convert that to BTU per minute so that they will have the same dimension as that of our uh, QH. So we have to multiply it by 42.4, the conversion factor between BTU per minute and horsepower. So we have 127.2 BTU per minute. Also from the given, we learned that the house is to be kept at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So obviously, since this is a heat pump, this is also the temperature of the hot reservoir. So our QH is 2000 BTU per minute. And then also from the given, our temperature of the high reservoir is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you have to convert it to the ramp kind. So the conversion is just 459.67. So use this the same uh, conversion so that we will, we will arrive at the same results. So we have 529.67 rank kind. So by substitution to our formula, QH is equal to 2000, power is 127.2, just equate it to TL over TH minus TL plus 1. So as you can see here, we only have one unknown and that is TL. So you will have to use algebraic manipulation to solve for TL and take note the result is still in Rankine because the temperature that we use here is Rankine. So solving for the temperature of the cold reservoir, so TL is 495.98 Rankine and subtract 459.67 so that we will arrive at 36.31 degrees Fahrenheit. So this reverse Carnot cycle requires three horsepower, which, uh, it, which extracts this energy from a lake to it to heat a hot source, uh, to heat our house at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which requires a, a 2,000 BTU per minute uh, to be maintained in the house. And then for this to happen, the temperature of the lake should be 36.31 degrees Fahrenheit. Our last example, sum for problem number four. A reverse Carnot cycle is used for refrigeration and rejects 1,000 kilowatt of heat at 340 Kelvin while receiving heat at 250 Kelvin. Determine the coefficient of performance, COP, the power required, and the refrigerating effect. So obviously this one is a reverse Carnot cycle, which is a refrigerator, which is the case also for a country like the Philippines. So we use refrigerator to maintain or to keep food or space in a cooler condition. So for this to happen, it will require some source of energy and it will also reject uh, energy to, to the outside. As you can see, for refrigerator, our desired output is cooling effect or refrigerating effect, and we call it QL. We symbolize it by QL. And then the requirement is the, the power that we use from the electricity, and that is our W or our work or power requirement. And then we have to maintain the space at a lower temperature than the outside. That's why our TL is a temperature of the space that we are to refrigerate. So using the formula for the reverse Carnot cycle efficiency for refrigerator, now we will have QL over W instead of having QH. And then the COP for refrigerator is just equals to TL over TH minus TL. So inspecting from the given, we are given with the temperature, the, the heat that is coming from the the outside or the heat where the heat of the outside or where you are rejecting heat. If you are if you are to look for example, our uh, refrigerator or outside our air condition 
lightning system, you can see that it's rejecting heat. So the heat that is being rejected is at higher heat than the heat that is inside the space. That's why it is the QH. So the heat being rejected here is 1,000 kilowatt from the given. And this is at a higher temperature of 340 Kelvin. And it's receiving heat from maybe from the food or from the people inside the, the space at 250 Kelvin. So substituting these, we will have COP of this refrigerator as just TL over TH minus TL. So just take note that it should be in Kelvin and the good thing is it's already in Kelvin. So you have 2.78, um, it's dimensionless. So our coefficient of refrigeration or coefficient of performance rather is 2.78. So for a refrigeration system to be more efficient, COP should be higher. The power required is just equals to the difference between the heat uh, input minus the heat output or the high temperature or the heat from the high source minus the heat from the low reservoir. That's why we have, we have to manipulate this first by um, cross multiplying our original equation for COP of the refrigeration refrigerator. So our refrigerating effect, we all know that it's QL, is just equals to COPR times the power input. That's W. And by substitution, so we know that from the power required, it can be written as QH minus COPR times W. And then we just have to work now for W or the, the power required. So we all know that our COP is 2.78. And when you first solve this, since we are to use the four decimal places, it's 2.7777. So our power required is 264.76 kilowatt. Since we already know our power required, we can also get the refrigerating effect. All we have to do is just to multiply it by the COPR. So that's why our refrigerating effect is 735.24 kilowatt. So we can we now have our COP, which is 2.78, which tells us that it should be higher for us to become more efficient. The power required or the power that that, is, that we tap from the electricity is 264.76 kilowatt. And the, the refrigerating effect or the 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 refrigerate the cooling effect that you produce in the space for food or for people is 735.24 kilowatt. So in these problems, we just basically review the equation for a Carnot cycle efficiency as well as for the reverse Carnot cycle efficiency because these are foundational to the, the discussions that we will have on the refrigeration systems. So see you next meeting. If you have questions, just chat me in our Moodle chat.